water you turned into wine hope in the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our god is greater our god is stronger lord you are higher than
Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, He is. God is powerful. He's all knowing. Father God, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Father God, let me be high behind the cross and you have your way in me, Lord. As I decrease, oh heavenly Father, you must increase. Father God, I thank you for truly blessing and you add no sorrow with it, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Yes, if you, if you don't know your God is good, you need to tell, ask somebody. Because I'm going to tell you, you can't have, there's no other one, no other name whereby we desire but the name of Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. I was listening to that song. If they don't know, they ain't telling my title or my theme what God gave me. And the theme is, just so you all know, is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. How God came down. Mm, mm, mm. Just think on the goodness of Jesus. How he sit there, how he came down and walked this earth for me and you. And as he walked the earth, and what the hell did he took for me and you? Because I'm going to tell you. When people spitting on you, people hitting you, kicking at you, railing you, and I got the power, guess what? You gone. But not Jesus. Because Jesus was as a lamb of God. He came down so that he can be able to show us humility. See, because in our world, we think we to be tough and rough, like football, you know. But if you realize in God's world, he wants you to be meek and humble. And as Jesus, when he came down, and because of the way he came down and what he did, he had a front runner, which was John. And that's why we are his front runner now. See, John said, I come to make a way for the Lord. You know, and not me. I didn't come. I'm not the one. They sent our disciples to him. You know, when I asked him, are you the one? He let them know, no, I'm not the one. And they said, well, if you ain't the one, why are you baptizing then? He said, I'm baptizing with water. But that one going to come. He going to baptize you with the fire and the Holy Ghost. See, that's what's really working here. It's the Holy Ghost fire that's working. If y'all can see what I see, Lord, 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 I can just see the flame running around. Nothing but the Holy Ghost. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he had done for me, my soul cried, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. When I look out and I see your face, it's only by the grace of God. It's only God that said, I'm the God with mercy. Right. And because of the grace of God and his mercy, it's nothing that we did. Yes. Don't get it twisted. We ain't did nothing to be here where we are today. Right. But because of his grace and his mercy, yes. that he able to stand here and praise him and to glorify him. We got our great grand. We got them all. Yes. Oh, and God is good. You know, I, 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 I might be having a little more joyful, too, because I got my daughter. Well, my other daughter, back. <laughs> you know, she come back in the fold, heaven, heaven, heaven. You know, a, a lot of times you got to let them fly, let them fly, and then God send them back where they belong. <laughs> See, we got to learn as parents to keep our, take our hands off and let God handle it. Because, see, God can do better than I can do. 
See, because if I had a stand on them, as a me as my as a father, if I had a not me, I'd be arguing with her, telling girl, you ain't got no business doing what you doing. But then she would have kept doing it. But because we left it alone, God worked it out. Put it in his hand. We have to understand. And let me tell you something. You man who didn't come, you Mr. Breckles. Let me tell you. Y'all Mr. Breckles yesterday. We had bacon, scrapple, egg, and grits. And then we had some biscuits. And y'all should have been here. It was good. All you had to do was put some butter. And they had some syrup, too, and jelly. You should have been here. You know, it's a shame that we put stuff on and y'all don't want to support. Let me just put it to you this way. I keep hearing people keep on saying, I understand you take a match. If you look at that match, it's a small little head. But when you scratch him and throw him in there and then in front, it couldn't be a big inferno. So I understand stuff got to start slow. But we've been here for a while. And our man should have been putting up here for this breakfast. Because that's the only way that we're going to get some dunamis power together is by coming together. I keep hearing people saying, let's go to Texas. Let's go to Georgia. Let's go to Chicago. Why? You got it right here. All you got to do is come together. The word of God said, well, two or three gather together. I am in the midst. So we ain't got to travel all over the world because it's right here. Because when Jesus Christ finished, he said, there's greater works you will do. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was the comforter was coming back to serve us, to help us, to lead us and guide us. So we don't have to go to Chicago. But what we got to do is able to come together. See, there's power when you come together. That's why when they was up in that upper room, when they was up in that upper room, they decide, hey, we were scared because God told them, Jesus said, God, go out and preach. But they went up in that upper room and tarry. They were scared to go out. But it's okay. You were scared. Jesus said, I got something for you. He walked through the door. Not through the door, through the wall. And when he walked through, they was there. He said, peace be still. No, peace, peace to you. I'm thinking about the water. He said, <laughs> he said peace to you. And as he did that, and he just told him, he said, look, touch my hand. Touch my body. Here I am. This is me. And they bleed him. That's why Thomas said the same thing. Let me see your hand, God. Let me see your, 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 your side. Then I believe. But see, we, he said, but Thomas, you believe because you have seen me. But blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe in my word. See, we got to believe the word of God. We got to know that we know that we know that we know that we are the child of the most high God. We are the child of God who say, as, as John say, there go the lamb. Yeah. Can you imagine sitting there looking at Jesus? Ain't that something? Just think about it for a minute. You're just looking at Jesus. Now, now I'm going I'm to I'm 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 hurt you right now because you guess what? When you turn around and look at each other, you're seeing Jesus if you got him in you. <laughs> see, you ain't got to look for. You can see the Jesus in us. Amen? Amen. And... and I, I don't know, but we're going to go where Holy Ghost say go. Amen. Wherever he say go, that's where we're going to go. We're going to do what does say the Lord. Amen. And I had told him, I said, well, this is one thing that I see that I love. I love God because he loved me. Who does? I love my parents because they love me. When my parents didn't do what I wanted to do, I kind of got mad at my parents. If I wanted something, they didn't do it, okay. I can sit in front of them. It ain't like today. Kids can say what they want in front of them. Back then, you better think about it, and you better not say too hard because they know it. And they think, you know, you get slapped upside the head. They tell you, what are you thinking about, bam? Who you think you grown, bam? Not no more. Now we done kid run rabbit. And they should have been here yesterday because yesterday was about obedience. However else are you going to find or how you going to get, how the kids going to grow if you don't plant the seed in them? If you sitting there partying with them instead of trying to read the word to them. I remember, mm, mm, mm. I remember when I went out here 
And I would have in mind, we in mind, I got that one grandson. He would walk with me every Sunday, come to church with me. Papa, where we going? We're going to church. We come to church and me and him be walking around this church praying. In the name of Jesus. I hear him, name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And I said, now, I asked, I said, son, where we going? Oh, no, Papa. I said, no, I done fell. Not the mama, not the daddy, me. I fell because I should have kept my foot on him. I said, come on here, boy, you going. This is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the word of God. We're going to preach about the word of God. We're going to speak about the word of God. Understand this here. 50 cent or a dollar, whatever, they all good. But Jesus Christ is better. We can go anywhere. You can do anything you want to do and, and, and say anything you want to see in the word of God. He's there. He's right there for us. And, but we want to be friends to our, I don't mind being friends to my children. I love them. But I'm your father. And I'm a child of the most high God. I'm trying to walk right. And you're trying to pull me down like the crabs. Every time you try to get out the basket, you pull me back down. But that ain't the way it's supposed to be. We are supposed to be here today to be able to, to lift each other up. We ain't supposed to be pulling each other down. I, I, I don't know. Hmm. But I tell you, I, 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 I thought about this. I was out in the world. God could have tucked me. There was a situation in my life that I happened that he could have just tucked me right out. But he didn't. There are some of my friends that were with me, not at the time, but we did some of the same thing, and God took them out. And I said, well, God, I know why now, because, God, you want me up here doing what I'm doing now. But I'm glad. I thank him every day, Pastor. I thank him that my commission is not over. I don't mind dying because I know where I'm going. But do I want to die? No, not yet. But the word of God said in Hebrew 9.27, Upon if a man wants to die, and then judgment. So we all going to die. And then somebody say, well, wait a minute, preacher. You keep telling me that, but I read in Matthew where he said um, that uh, there are going to be some still here when he come. I said, yeah, you did read that, but you stopped. Because if you keep reading on, you'll see where it says, and then they must die. We got to die because you got to die. Jesus Christ came down and died. So because he did it, we got to do it. You ain't gonna, we ain't going to do no more than he, no more and no less than what he did. And I told let's get into the word. Yeah, I know, yeah, the preacher ain't said nothing, but you know, to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I, if you turn it, we're going to go to John, well, first chapter, and here we're going to go. We're going to come right up to the 29th, and we didn't talk the whole chapter out almost. <laughs> we could probably sit down, but... Let's go to 19 verse. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests, priests and Levi from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and did not, denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elijah? He said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us, and who has says thou of thyself. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, and said the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. Now, this is what he let them know. He let them know already, I am not the Christ. I'm not even the prophet that you say I am. I'm not Elijah, and I'm not the prophet. I'm not Christ. He said, but I am the one cried in the wilderness to make his plain straight for the Lord. And that's our job today. Our job is to make it straight and plain to the people. Our job is now, we are Elijah. We are, who I told you what? John. We are John. We got to make our way, make it plain. And Isaiah said he meant the, the valley rise up. The crooked, he makes straight. He makes everything plain. Why? So that you'll know, because there's no division in the Lord. And this is where we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be able to be rise up and, and make everything plain for everybody. And it say, and they who was with, was sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptize thou then if thou be not the Christ? 
nor Elijah, neither that prophet. And John answered and said, uh, saying, I baptize with water, but there are one among you whom ye know not. Not only did he didn't see, you heard that word, whom you know not? John didn't even know who it was when he was sinning at this moment because it hadn't sinned upon him like it's supposed to. So John was letting him know, but John knew somebody was there. Amen? And he said, it is he who is coming after me, who is preferred before me, whose shoe lays I am not worthy to unloose. In other words, John telling him, it's somebody higher than me. I'm just a, I'm just a, 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 a messenger. But it's somebody higher than me is coming that is better, that is before before me. And he let them know it is here, but y'all just don't know who it is at this moment. He said, but I'm going to let you know in a second. And he's saying, these things were done in Bethlehem beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. Then the, here we go. Now, this is where I got his name. He said, the next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and said, behold, the Lamb of God. He let him know. Be, look, understand. Stop what you're doing and know that this is the Lamb of God. This is the one who coming to take away our sin. And but you know we understand. See, we got to. They were still staking infinite instead of spiritually, because they looking for a kingdom to come, king to come to, to destroy the Romans. And but here come the Lamb. Lamb is somebody who what is meat. He be led to the slaughter. Isaiah fifty three and seven say. He be led when he go to the slaughter to the shears and he don't even mama a word. You know, I be hollering and everything else, <laughs> kicking there to tie everything up on me. But he didn't. He knew where he was going. And, and which take away the sins of the world. This is he whom I said after he mean come as a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me. And I know him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I come baptizing with water. See, what John really was doing, John was getting them ready. See, because they didn't know nothing about baptism. So when John was out in the wilderness, when the people started coming to sin, he started baptizing with the water. And once he started baptizing with the water, he was preparing them to be able to get baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that stain went on. So when they came on out there, and John let them know, hey, I'm baptizing you with the water, but there's one greater than me going to baptize with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, you got to be five. I never forget that back when I was a kid. I used to hear the old folks always say, five baptized. And I used to say, what? There ain't nothing burning me up. What are you talking about? But I know now. You want that five baptism. Because that five baptism, that's the one where let you be able to, you can walk through the door. That fire baptism, that's the same thing that let you have your problem. You can, but you ain't got to, you don't worry about it because you know who's going to do what you need to be done. You know if you trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways that we acknowledge him, he's going to direct our path. That's why we have that fire baptism. That fire baptism is the same thing that let us do what we have to do. When your car breaks down, you're still happy. When your house is in some trouble, you're still happy. When your family life is in trouble, you're still happy. When everything is chaos all around you, but you're still in ha you're happy because you're happy for the Lord. Because that Holy Spirit on the inside, it permeates to the outside. And when it permeates on the outside, it ain't nothing but the glory of God. And as we go forth and do what we do, we do to the glory of God. You can't do nothing on your own. Because Isaiah said what? Our, our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. But we can do all things through Christ Jesus. Ain't that what Philippians say? He said we can do all things through Christ Jesus as we trust in him, as we lean on our understanding. If, and if somehow I, 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 I be looking, even I, I, I'm one too. I, I, I say I was part, I am part of that problem because as a Christian, I don't have enough faith to know that God's going to carry me through. 
when I come to some, when some uh, objects comes in my way, I should be able to trust in the Lord. I should not have to get worried or worrying all the time. I ain't supposed to be worried. I'm supposed to trust in the Lord. I'm supposed to know that God going to take care of it. Even though it's right now, it look hard for me right now, but I know I should supposed to trust the Lord, and I know he going to carry me through it because I know this here. From, I'm, I'll be 60 in October, but I tell you what, and I had some good life, some hard times, some good times, but he brought me through them. Yes, he brought me through them. There was time when I didn't have a, one shoe, and that was singing. You know, you know, y'all know what I mean, you older one. You know, you got to try to hold your feet so it don't talk. You know, you're walking like that, you know, but then you, when you wanted to flap, you just boop, boop, boop. The wind's off, the wind's off, calling out. You know, but I tell you what, but God was good. We might not have had too many clothes, but guess what? They ain't like it. They got so many clothes today, Pastor. They got so many clothes, the clothes got clothes. They don't even know what they want to put on no more. But back then, we didn't have it. We had what we had, but guess what Mama did? She washed them. She made sure they was clean and made sure you was clean. You didn't go to church. Now, if you go to church on Sunday morning, you're going to go and you're going to be clean. You might have the same day you were last Sunday, but it's going to be clean this Sunday. And you're going to go there, and you're going to sit in that chair and be attentive, and you're going to see what does say the Lord, whoever is carrying it, because if you're sitting out there acting up, all mama got to do is give you a look. And once she give you that look, you got two chances. You got two seconds to straighten up or get out. Because after that, you're in trouble. It ain't like now, if you hear them or something, oh, here come the cop. They're like, hey, come here. Wait a minute, sister. Stop right. Preach on me. Right back. Go right there and tie your butt up. Then go on about their business. Go on and preach and keep on going. And, and, and then the sisters, because they, they were good for that, them old sisters. Uh, sister Alexander. <laughs> you know, tell them. But that's okay. You know, it didn't kill me. It didn't kill me, and it didn't make me tough, it didn't make me hatred. I still love women, I love it, I, and I love men too, but in a godly way. Oh, baby, I don't mean like that, hon. I'm with you, you my baby, you know that. You understand? <laughs> I'm taking, I'm already gone. Look, I, I got two rings, I don't want none of that. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Y'all got to understand, God is a, he's a human. He got human, human with him. He got humility. He got a sense of humor. Somehow we think God is just so, hmm? Hey, how y'all doing? This is the God. <laughs> no, no. God, he said, if you go to Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these many blessings will be added unto you. So that means whatever you desire, if you seek him first, he going to grant it to you. It might not come when we want it, but it'll be on time. I mean, I know some stuff. Then you got people praying, praying for us all over the world, and you get enough of stuff you ain't even asked for. But because they pray, just like we pray for everybody else. And when the stuff, when it comes, it comes. And, and, and as we go on now, we're going to, and it say, <laughs> and I knew him not, but that, that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come baptized with the water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Mm, mm, mm. Now that's when John knew who Jesus Christ was. Because God had told him, and Matthew let him know, he told him that the one that is the Holy Spirit is sitting upon, that is the Holy, that's the God, that's Jesus. That's who the one be baptized with fire and water. So now that John know all that, after he's seeing the Holy Ghost on, on, on Jesus, he realized that this is Jesus. This is the one going to baptize with fire and, I'm gonna say water, and the Holy Ghost. And as we get that, as you get baptized, the good thing about it now is you don't have to, all we got to do is come up front, confess your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose, and guess what? Holy Ghost is right alive. Holy Ghost is having his good time in you right then and there. You become a whole new creature. Old man passed away, behold, all things begin new. Because you have a whole new, whole new perspective about what God is all about. I mean, I'm going to tell you, like the word of God says, if your enemy slap you. Now, if your enemy, if somebody hits you, you're going to hit them back. Let's be real. If somebody hits you, you're going to hit them back. Basically. 
unbasically, whatever, you're going to hit them back. Now, but if you're in the spirit, when somebody hits you, you might, you'll think about it. You know what I'm saying? You will. You'll think about it. Well, shit. Sure. But because I'm going to tell you, like one day I was, I'll never forget, I was at this one church. They said, okay, we got a superintendent here. And they were talking about turning over the cheek. I said, okay. And said, well, well uh, superintendent, what will you do? I told him, if I ain't in the spirit, you better run. Because <laughs> if I'm not in the spirit, you're in trouble. I said, but if I'm in the spirit, I may have some time. I may think about it and turn the other cheek. You know, I said, but that's how we, that's the only way we can do that. The only way we can love our enemy is through the Holy Ghost. You can't love him without the Holy Ghost. You cannot do it. You won't do it. Because it all, without the Holy Ghost, you're self-centered. It's all about you. But with the Holy Ghost, it's about Jesus. Amen. It's about him. All about him. Everything we say and do will be about him. And, and I know him not. But he that sent me to baptize with the water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now, do we let us know that he let him, after God let him know, Jesus, see, God tell us the same thing. He don't send you blind. You give you time to think, give you, get, a, get his word to read it, and if we read it, we get it in us so we can get it out of him. But he gives you the chance to read the word, and once you read the word, then when things come up against you, you'll be understand, you'll know what it is. See, John knew what it was because God told him. When you see the Spirit is sitting upon him, and you'll know. Even in Matthew, it said that once the Spirit came upon him, what did it do to him? It took him right out, right into the wilderness. But then at the same time, it was taken to the window, the bottom of the, the bottom of that scripture said, and Jesus said, This is my son who I'm well pleased. He let him know I'm pleased with him. Why was he pleased with Jesus? Because Jesus did everything he told him to do. He was obedient to his father. He didn't do nothing, even though he was a hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. But he never used his deity for the power, but he always looked to God. And that's how, why he do that. He did that because he want us to know that we need to look to somebody. And that somebody is Jesus. That's why Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come into the Father but by me. How do we think we're going to be out here and fight a, war, a spiritual warfare if you don't have no word in you? This is not a fleshly battle. You, cannot, you can do all the swinging you want and say you ain't going to hit him. But if you throw word on him, you'll knock him out. But you got to use word. You know, so, but people keep forgetting. They keep, on, keep forgetting that it got to be the word of God that we got to use. God said, my word don't return to me void, but it's a company purpose that I set it out to do wherever I send it out. But that we want to go and we want to physically fight Satan. We can't be Satan that way. We got to be Satan with the word of God. That's why God is trying, that's why he sent the Lamb of God. He sent the lamb down so that we could have new life. Even though our church say new life, but Jesus sent us so we could have new life. Mm. And, I, and then as I look at it, and as I think about it, <laughs> even the disciples, when they had him here, didn't know who he was. And the thing, when he was up in the upper room, they did not, the stuff did not reveal to them until after Jesus had ascended up to the Father and he was buried. Then he stays start thinking, oh, this is what he told me. This is what happened. This is what happened. But see, now they didn't have what we got. We got the whole, well, they had something better than we got to me. To have Jesus right here with me, <laughs> I won't ask no more questions. I won't need no more. Nothing. They don't know how lucky they were. They had Jesus right there with them. You know, and ain't had to go nowhere. The word of God said you ain't got to even pray. You ain't got, why are you looking for the bridegroom when she's right here with you? You ain't got to fast. You ain't got to pray. You ain't got, oh, even when they went to him, you could tell they ain't got to pray because remember when the disciples said Jesus teach us to pray? Pray. He was with them before the end. He was with them all a couple years before that happened. They said, teach me to pray, God, because God knew that he had to put it in them because he was going to lead, that they need to know how to pray. See, we didn't got out of hand him. We don't pray like we should pray. We need to get back. This is a praying church. We need to get back to praying. Praying. I remember when I first came here, 
I, on Wednesday, I was scared to come in here. Because they get to pray. <laughs> it was praying. I'm like, whoa, maybe in the wrong place. But I had to, I, I persevered. And now I'm one of them. But the thing I'm saying is, we need to get back into praying God and pray. We need to get back to teaching our young folks how to pray. That this is what it's about. You want to come in here? I ain't, I'm not over to you, Wednesday. I'm telling you. But you want to come here on Wednesday? Bring your kids so they can learn to pray. Not, not to come just to play, but to pray. See, because they learn to pray, then they can grow. And as you grow, then you can fight Satan. When you're in school and people are doing stuff to you, you can use that word. Or uh, if people doing something to you, you got the boldness to do what you got to do. You'll be able to go and tell who you got to tell because you won't be afraid. Right. See, we make the kids so much afraid of the wrong thing. Right. Right. They need to be afraid of God. Amen. They need to I know when I was a kid, I thought if I didn't do right, I'm going to hell. Mm -hmm. I'm them old folks used to teach nothing but hell, fire, and brimstone. <laughs> That's what they used to preach. When you come in, if you ain't doing this right, you going to hell. But I tell you what, it's kept us straight. It's not to understand when we're out in the world and we're doing certain things, well, I better stop because I ain't going to hell. I don't want to go to hell. So you stop. And this is what God's word is. We got to understand, people, we got to get back into praying and serving God. It ain't all about how pretty you're looking. And if somehow we kids are so smart today. When we were born, we had our eyes closed for six months. Probably didn't walk to a year or something after that. And didn't talk maybe three years later. Now they come in house with their eyes open. Matter of fact, they want to know, why did you touch me? <laughs> they tell the doctor now, you know, and, and so they're so smart. So, and can you imagine if we finally just put them in the word of God? If we start our children in the word of God, how they going to be? How much power are they going to have? When you hear a child just talk about, talk about how good God is, that makes your heart, that, that makes you almost be like John and, and Jesus. When, G, when Mary talked to Elizabeth, they said, what, uh, John leaped in the moon. That's how we'll be when you hear the little kids talking. Remember, Pastor, we had the little girls over here on, on Wednesday? Them little girls about like that, they jumped up and said, God is good and God helped me. I'm like, whoa, this is who you need. Don't, don't, don't stop and let her come. Because we need that so that she can make the old folks know they can testify. Yeah. Let them know that God is good. Yeah. See, because God, God wants us to testify about how good he is. People don't, who don't testify about how good he is, then people are not going to ever know. They're not going to ever care about it. That's why he said, there go, that's what John said, there go the Lamb of God. Remember, John was baptizing too. He was out there, not only was he baptizing too, he had to baptize Jesus. So that means John was special. He was the man, right? So why would I tell you that go pass when I'm the man? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I want all the gravy. But yet John didn't do that. John said, there go the lamb. Somebody higher than I. There go the lamb that can help us. Here go the lamb that can, can baptize with fire and holy, with the Holy Ghost. See, I just taught you how to, get, how to watch yourself. But Jesus is going to clean you. See, that's what it's about. John washed you, but Jesus clean. See, the word of God cleans you. In Matthew, I mean, Ephesians 5, 26, read it. It said the, the, girl, the word of God will wash you. And only by the word of God you get washed. I'd never forget when I used to be a kid, I used to sit down on the curb thinking about what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go, and how I'm going to get there. Now... I'm grown up. Now I think about will y'all leave me alone so I can read the word of God. Will you leave me alone so that I can just think on the goodness of Jesus? I mean, I'll be at work. That's what my buddy uh, Gibbons. <laughs> we be at work together. And hey, I'll be here. I'll be having my Bible. I'll read. Soon as I'm trying to read, everybody want to come to the door. What you doing, preacher? What do it look like? I want to say, what do it look like I'm doing? I'm trying to read. You coming up to me with telling me something stupid that I don't even care about. But I can't be that way. I got to be humble, right? So we have to be quiet, humble around, close the book up, say, now what you want to talk about? 
I said, well, God, I guess you put me through this test. You're showing me. I keep telling you, Father God, that it's not about me, but about you having your way in me. And I, but when I really sit down and I want to do this here, but you're making me do this and this, and I don't want to do this what I want to do. But then God said, well, hold it. You said I'm in control. So if I'm in control, who you listen to? You know, that's like the president of the United States. All the cabinet, the president really don't do nothing. He just can speak well. Sorry, president. But I tell you, his cabinets will do the work. They do the work. But you don't, on, but on that TV, when that president get ready to speak, he got it together. He can speak from A to Z, Z to B, B to Z. And I'll be like saying, I'll be looking at him sometime. I wonder do he got a, uh, you know, when they got a little board back there for him to look at. <laughs> but I said, or oh, they got something in his ear. Well, you know you got to say this too, Robert President. But I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, that's me. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. Ooh, Lord. And I tell you, I tell you what we're going to do. This is anointed ground, right? This is holy ground here. We're going to confess that the man going to come together. We're going to have something. I don't know what it is, but we're going to come together and we're going to have something right here in New Life where churches can come together. And it ain't going to be about you being Baptist. It ain't about you being Methodist. It ain't about you being Pentecostal. It ain't about you being white. It ain't about you being black. It ain't about you being brown. It's about you being a child of the Most High God. It's about coming together and serving God and showing people that we can have the same dunamis power right here in, New, in Franklinville in New Life than they got all over. Because we got it. We got it. See, I'm going to tell you something. It ain't nothing. I, I love the women. The women, y'all there. The man needs to come up. The man needs to step up and take their rightful place for the Lord. He needs you to do what you're supposed to do. Look, don't let me tell you. Let God call you. I'm just saying man needs to step up. And it's somehow the churches, when God started, it was started. The man was ahead. Man was, it was the man. But all of a sudden, the man wasn't there to do nothing. So they had to take the women. And then still, and here it is 2015. And it's still like, like it ain't, well, I mean, where the man's at? Well, I mean, we got some here, but where the man? I mean, where did, ain't no football game, huh? No basketball game until later on. March Madness only fought for two more weeks and it's over. So what's the problem here? It's because we don't push that man need to get themselves together. And get in the church. That's right. Push him. Let that girl name. Push him, push him, push him. What does it say? That's uh, salt and pepper. You know, we got to push him. Push him. Get him out. We don't want to force you, though, but we will push you. Know that. I will push him. Pastor push you, too, but we will push you. I mean, a lot, a lot of y'all will look at me sometimes and say, oh, that's a mean elder. No, I'm not the mean elder. I'm the stern elder. I believe in what the word of God say. And I noticed that when you, when you don't be stern on you, you just run wild. So you, somebody got to bring us in somehow. Amen? Amen. I guess I'm done, y'all. 